So guys, welcome back to another whiteboard session. It's been a long time, but we're gonna try and do a lot more of these. We've been preoccupied doing other stuff around the facility, various projects going on at the moment. So we're gonna jump into another whiteboard session. I think it's session number two, uh, following, following on from DNS video that I've done probably about six months ago now. So we're gonna talk about BGP, what BGP is, how the internet works, and how it all ties together. Stay tuned. Okay, so to understand BGP, we need to understand how the internet works because without understanding how the internet works, you won't understand what BGP is, how it works, and how people like us, data centers and connectivity providers actually use it. So the internet is just loads of local networks that talk to one another. So for instance, us here, custodian, can talk to another DC over here, say ICM, which is another one of our sites, um, we can actually talk to one another through BGP. So internet is just loads of little networks connected like this in various ways, okay? So what BGP does is it's a way for networks to tell one another where certain networks live. So for instance, if you see if this works, okay. So. The way BGP works is you've got a few elements to make it up. So you've got an ASN, which is a autonomous system number. What this is, is it's a unique number given to every single ISP so that they can be identified. Um, it's just a unique number. So for custodian, it's 50300. So what we do when we establish our BGP peerings, which is us talking to other providers in order to exchange traffic, um, this number identifies us around the world. So when we establish what's called a BGP peering session, we'll get the other party's ASN, and then we'll establish a, a session on a certain IP address. Normally that IP range is given by an IXP, but if it's a direct peering, it'll be given by the other ASN. The whole point of BGP is to not only allow networks to talk to one another, but it also means the better connected you are, the quicker you can get from A to B. So if we look at... Okay, so I'm gonna show you visually how BGP works and how it selects the best path. So the whole concept behind BGP is its best, best path selection. So what it will do is it's like Google Maps. You put in a destination, it looks at where you are and it will take you the best route. Same with BGP, but for the internet. So if you've got Five networks here. You got network A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. So if I wanted to get from A to E, you can go this way. Okay. So at the moment, the best path for A to get to E is via B, C, D. Right. So when you run a trace route at the moment from A to E, you would go through A, then B, then C, then D to E. Okay. If you set up a direct peering session with E, however you want to do it, normally via an IXP, like this, you've then got a direct connection to that. So that is your best route, which means when you do a trace route, you're going to trace route from A directly to E. Um, the best way to explain it is, imagine you're going on a journey, set up Google Maps, and these are your random stops. It's not the best way of getting you to E, but you can still get to E. However, if you've got a direct connection, it's a lot quicker, a lot less things can go wrong in the middle. You know, it's just a better way of doing things. So, a minute ago I mentioned about an IXP, which is an internet exchange provider. These are the likes of Lynx. Lynx is quite a big one. <sighs> okay, sorry about the radio. I've got it on in the background just in case something goes drastically wrong. Okay, so I mentioned about Lynx, which is the London Internet Exchange. It's one of many IXPs around the country and around the world. These are basically massive network switches where a load of providers plug in because it's cheaper and then they exchange routes that way. So effectively in this, if Lynx was in the middle, like so, when you do a trace route, you'd see it go through Lynx. The reason sometimes you have peering through an internet exchange rather than a direct connection is because a direct connection, you need a physical cable between A and E. 
we have over a thousand periods. Can you imagine how much that costs in network cables? So we connect to links where all of the other people we peer with do, as well as a few others, and then we exchange routes that way. You can actually go on our website and see a full list of our peerings, which is quite big. We're one of the, I think, fifth or sixth most connected network in the UK. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty expensive if you were to do direct connections. So that's why we use it in exchanges. It's just a lot easier, a lot cheaper, and everyone kind of just gets on and makes things happen. You know, we're all part of the same thing without everyone working together, there'd be no internet. BGP also has its downfalls, but the internet is built a lot on trust. The more specific a route is, the more preference it has. So, what has happened in the past is people, other networks, or even other countries, sometimes accidentally, sometimes maliciously, have set up sessions that have managed to take people offline because they've announced a more specific prefix that they don't actually have. So the traffic on the internet goes to the more specific prefix, i.e. this one, and it goes nowhere because it doesn't actually exist. So I believe it was YouTube actually was taken offline a couple of years ago because someone mistyped a, um, a session config, ended up announcing the wrong range, and half of YouTube's traffic went to this provider that didn't actually own those IPs. Because they didn't own those IPs, there weren't any servers with them, and because there weren't any servers, people basically went to a black hole. Uh, all null and void, that traffic just got dropped. So maliciously, you could do that, but the internet is built on trust. And I don't think anyone wants to be on the receiving end of taking half of Google offline or YouTube or Facebook, whoever. That being said, it is not easy to get an ASN. So, you know, you've got to have a big, big justification for it. IP addresses are being exhausted. So various LIRs, which are local internet registries, they're starting to restrict who gets IPv4 addresses. They're happy to give out V6s. And again, we're V6 enabled, so we also establish peering sessions over IPv6. So it works the same way as V4. It just, it's just more accessible um, from an LIR perspective because they've got more of them. Problem is a lot of uh, data centers aren't yet IPv6 ready, but that's for another video. Where we'll talk about V6 addressing, subnetting, etc. But for now, that's how the internet works. That's BGP. A few more videos to come in the next few weeks, guys. Not necessarily whiteboard sessions, but definitely stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell button, and we'll see you in the next video.